Hey guys, Scott Poley here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I get the Peter Green guitar sound that he made famous on all those early recordings by Fleetwood Mac. If you're not aware of Peter Green, he started the band Fleetwood Mac with Mick Fleetwood all those many years ago before John McVie even joined. He was a legendary British blues guitarist who took inspiration from BB King, Otis Rush and all the guys. He's an amazing singer, great songwriter, wrote some of the classics that we all know and love. I urge you to go and check him out. So if this video sounds of interest to you, I'd love it if you consider liking the video, subscribing and leaving a little comment. It certainly helps me in the channel. So let's get into it. So before the pandemic hit, I was on tour regularly doing 100 plus dates a year with a band called Rumours of Fleetwood Mac. We cover Fleetwood Mac songs as authentically as possible. Uh, we tour theatres and incredible venues all over the world. One of my jobs is to play all of those famous Peter Green licks, including Albatross, Need Your Love So Bad, Oh Well and all that stuff. And it's certainly my favourite part of the show. So to start off with, let's have a little look at the history. So the story starts in London, early 1960s, a young Peter Green is poised to take over from Eric Clapton. Even by that point, Clapton was the legendary guitarist with John Mayall, and he was leaving to form a band called Cream, who I'm sure you're familiar with. So Peter Green went out and wanted a similar guitar to Eric, so he bought a 1959 Les Paul Standards in Sunburst, the same as Eric's. Um, and he did a few modifications to it, kind of unwittingly apparently, the story is very murky, but it ended up with the neck pickup being turned around. So this is my Les Paul that I've been using that's wired up like Peter Green's. And you can see uh, the pole pieces are the same way around. That's not the same on most Les Pauls. Somewhere in the process, the pickups in Peter Green's Les Paul became out of phase. People think that Peter Green was the first person to ever do this, and that's not entirely true. There's loads of records by B.B. King, by T-Bone Walker going back, that feature out of phase guitar sounds. Even Gibson had loads of guitars, uh, Gold Tops with P90s, and Humbucker Equip 335s and 355s that left the factory out of phase. In terms of the rig, Peter plugged into many different amplifiers over the years. No real effects pedals by then, although he did use reverb. He loved reverb, particularly on the slower tunes, and was known to even use two reverb units live to get that big echoey sound. Uh, Peter plugged into a variety of amps, Marshalls, um, Orange amps were sponsoring Fleetwood Mac on tour, and Fender amps as well. In this case, I'm plugging my Les Paul, which is a Les Paul standard from mid 2000s, nothing particularly special, it's quite a nice Les Paul, into a Rift PR18 amplifier. It's an amazing small amplifier built in the UK that gives a nice warm fendery kind of sound. And I'm using a couple of pedals, an exotic EP booster, just for a bit of warmth and a bit more sustain. I'm using a Strymon Deco for a little bit of tape saturation and the compression that comes with it. And if I want to go to a kind of full out Green Man Alicia or Oh Well level of gain, then I might use a Wampler hot wired or something similar. It doesn't really matter. I mean, in the old days, they would have just cranked amplifiers up, but you know, this is my home studio, so you know, I can't whack an amp on full in here. A big part of the Peter Green sound is the pickups. So in this guitar, I'm using a set of OX4 pickups. And of course the sound comes from using both pickups together with both volumes pretty high up. Um, there's lots of other companies that make pickups to similar specs. Burr Knuckle make a set that sound great. I tried a set of those recently and they sound incredible. They're, they're great and there's a bunch of other manufacturers that make them. You can't really lose. Another big part of the Peter Green guitar sound is how the amplifier and the guitar is recorded. I'm actually going to release a video next week about guitar amplifier recording, so check that one out, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon so it'll let you know when that video comes out. But I'm using an X Audio ribbon mic, uh, Stuart at X Audio makes these incredible ribbon mics and modifies old ribbon mics. This is a fairly cheap ribbon mic that I'm using on this one, but it sounds amazing. I'm also using a room mic. Um, in the room to get the sound of the guitar acoustically. Uh, you can hear that on the records where the vocal mic is picking up the spill from the guitar amp and the guitar itself. So you hear a mix of the distant guitar amplifier and the close-up 
kind of acoustic natural guitar sound. If I had one top tip, it would be don't use too much gain. Okay, Peter Green was legendary for his tone and feel, but none of it was as distorted as you think it is. Even Oh Well is not that gainy. Again, Green Man Alishi, by today's standards, it was comparatively clean. The other thing I would say is play dynamically. Don't just rely on boost pedals for your solos. Learn how to play softly in your right hand and approach the guitar to get that nice sound that he perfected in a relatively short time with Fleetwood Mac. So if you want to go and get this Peter Green guitar sound for yourself today to make your own music or to cover some of those Peter Green classics, what gear should you use? Well, ideally you'd use a Les Paul, of course, you know, the classic Peter Green thing, but you could also use any guitar with two humbucking pickups, you know, an SG, a 335, whatever works. Ideally, you should buy a set of Peter Green spec pickups. You can have your existing pickups modified, absolutely you can, but if you want to revert your guitar back to normal, then it might be a good solution for you. Um, in terms of pedals, you want a mild gain boost pedal. There's loads of them available, there's too many to mention. And a nice amp, you know, it, and a nice amp can be anything from, you know, the cheapest of amps. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it, like I say, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, give that bell icon a little ring for me, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.